GARP! Come on, everybody, you know the words! GARP! 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 G-A-R-P! Who's the man that's got the D? It's GARP! Oh, yeah, it's GARP! Uh-huh! Oh, yeah! Alright, listen up. Um... I know we've been talking a lot about death on this channel. We've been talking about a lot of the Straw Hats dying on this channel as of late. But uh, I'm going to tell you right here and right now, Garp is not going to die at this point in the story. He's good. Don't worry about it, guys. Garp is going to survive. Okay, okay. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. How many people think Garp is going to die here at Hachinosu? Raise your hands. Okay, uh, wait, one, two, three, four, no, no, okay, okay, no, no, let's do something else, let's do something else, okay. Everybody that thinks Garp is going to die at Hachinosu, move your screen to the left. Everybody that thinks he's going to survive, move it to the right. Okay, oh, okay, that's way easier, that's way easier for me to count. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. oh, look, it's all, look, all the people that think he's gonna survive, it's way more than the people that think he's gonna die, it's so clear! You can't see it, that from my perspective, I could see it, and it's crazy, alright, alright, look, Oda's a good writer, okay, Oda's a good writer here, alright, now look, I know you could probably spin this in a way, from chapter 1070, wait, no, what are we up to now? Holy crap. <laughs> 1087. That, uh, okay, you know, Garp, he's kind of sacrificing himself for Kobe here, right? And Garp even said, as he came screaming over the bow of his ship, you know, galaxy impacting the island, um, Kobe, you are the future of the Marines, okay? So you could look at him, and also because of the perspective in what Aokiji told him, like you have a habit of raising enemies, you know, because, you know, uh, Dragon is Garp's son, who would, of course, become a revolutionary. Luffy ended up becoming a pirate, and then Kuzan now is now fighting against Garp, okay? So that's why Aokiji said that, and so maybe Garp is like, oh, okay, well... I'm gonna, I'm gonna die for Kobe or something like that. I'm gonna sacrifice myself for Kobe so Kobe, you know, he gets put on the straight path. He knows where to go from here on out, okay? He's the future of the Marines, all right? Now listen, I have no doubt Kobe is gonna grow up to be a splendid Marine. He kind of already is. The dude is like 18 years old and he's already a captain. That's a pretty high rank, okay? So uh, I have no doubt that uh, Kobe's eventually going to achieve his dream. He's going to become an admiral and maybe even the fleet admiral eventually, you know. Um, no, no issues with that, okay? Uh, does Garp need to die right here and now for that to happen? Uh, I would say no. I, I would say that doesn't need to happen right here and now, okay? So a couple of reasons why Garp is not going to die here, all right? Uh, a lot of this stuff was, was mentioned by people. Uh, the most notable one is in the last chapter, uh, Garp was not smiling. So Garp, of course, Monkey D. Garp, he's the man that's got the D, all right? It's in the song. So Garp has the will of D, which means if he's going to die, he's going to die with a smile on his face, okay? Uh, every other member of the will of D that we've seen so far has died with a smile on their face, you know? Ace, Roger, Rouge, you know, the only person that I could see maybe not dying with a smile on their face is Blackbeard. Because his ambitions are, like, more toward, like, you know, uh, chaotic evil. And uh, also the idea of, like, Whitebeard saying, you know, he's like, oh, he's not, you know, you're, uh, Roger's not the one waiting for you. Or you're not the one that Roger's waiting for. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff, right? Although, even though, I'll even say that, like, when Blackbeard, if he ever actually does die in the story. Like, when the Straw Hats fight against the Blackbeard Pirates, finally. And Luffy does fight against Blackbeard. And let's say he wins. He just, like, straight up kills Blackbeard. I could still kind of see Blackbeard dying with a smile on his face, even if his ambitions have been lost to him, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, Garp, if he's gonna die, he's gonna have a smile on his face, and he has the exact opposite of that at the end of the last chapter. He's just like, mmm, don't worry, Kobe, justice will prevail. All right, now look, it might just be because, you know, I... I'm a fan of One Punch Man or whatever, but I just have this, I just have this feeling, I just have this vibe, this, this beat in my chest, which may be my heart, I'm not really sure, um, but I have this feeling, you know, Garp's gonna get back up and he's gonna do something really cool, alright, he's gonna do something really cool, um, now, there, there was a running gag I did in the review, and the running gag was like, you know, you think you know Garp, you don't know Garp, I know Garp, alright, you think this is the first time Garp's been stabbed, this isn't. Like, like, just straight up. Garp has been a Marine for 50 plus years. 
Yes, he's 78 now. Yes, he's getting on in years, okay? But hey, he doesn't have random old person disease like Whitebeard did. He's in pretty good shape. He still works the battleship bags every morning. Um, there was that flashback with Chin Zhao, which I did not imagine. That was an actual little thing where um, Garp went up to Chin Zhao and was like, Hey, Chin Zhao, I, I pounded eight mountains into dust this morning getting ready for this. You know what I mean? Let's get ready for this battle, right? So that definitely happened. Whether or not Garp was being serious or, you know, he was just being, he was exaggerating a bit. But with Garp, you, you never know, really, okay? So Garp definitely trained on mountains. He trained on uh, battleships. Um, and, and once again, with the battleship thing, keep in mind, that was with no hockey... Obviously, Garp does not have a Devil Fruit power, okay? So I would imagine Garp has a different levels of training. Like, the Battleship Bag is just his base level, like, just muscle training. Like, like basically, if Garp was just in our world with no magic powers, no hockey, no Devil Fruits, or anything like that, if somebody in our world was, like, training on battleships and leaving dents that size that we saw in the last chapter, you would be amazed by that person. That person would be, like, the strongest person in the entire world! You know, think of, like, the, the best heavyweight boxers out there. You know, they're not training on freaking battleships. That's Garp, okay? And then Garp also has other training, I would imagine, more focused on his armament hockey, which is crazy. Crazy powerful, okay? So Garp will, like, all right, that's my... That's my regular muscle training. Now, because I've trained my muscles in that way, my armament hockey will hit even further. It's like a multiplier or something, you know? Now that I've trained on the battleship bags and my muscles are ready to go, now my armament hockey is like 10 times stronger than that. You know, something like that. I don't know. And then he can train on mountains and stuff like that. There's, there's no doubt in my mind if Garp wanted to obliterate a mountain with his fists that he could do that, you know, that, that he could definitely do that if he wanted to, okay? There's no question there, all right? So he got stabbed by Shiryu, which, which is not good. I mean, he took the hit for Kobe. He got ran right through with Shiryu's blade. Shiryu's an expert swordsman. That's not good. Um, some of the other riffraff on Hachinosu tried to jump him, but, you know, that didn't really care too much about that. You know, he's Garp after all. As Kuzan said, you know, you could, you could restrain that man. You could bound all of his arms and legs, and he, and he would still kick your ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so then Kuzan fires up his ice glove arm him in hockey, and then they both, you know, punch each other in the face. So, Garp hits Kuzan right here in the jaw, and Kuzan hits Garp right in his forehead, and he gets knocked back, and he's holding his forehead, and he's like, oh, man, that smarts, right? However, at the end of the chapter, it's important to note, uh, when Garp was, like, lying on the ground, and he was like, oh, don't worry, Kobe, justice will prevail, and all that good stuff, right? His forehead doesn't really look all that injured. It doesn't look like he was, like, profusely bleeding out of his forehead or anything like that. It just looks like, yeah, I think there was a little bit of blood on his forehead, but he was fine. Um, he was, like, kind of clutching his forehead, kind of the same way, like, whenever Luffy was fighting against Katakuri, and Katakuri's armament hockey was stronger than Luffy's with his block mochi, and so Luffy punched Katakuri's fist, and he's like, his hand starts to swell up, and he's like, oh, man, that hurt, you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of like that. That was kind of the reaction I got from that. I did not, I did not interpret that as, like, Garp has received a mortal injury now in both of those instances. You're getting ran through by Shiryu, getting punched in the forehead by uh, Kuzan. I, I don't see it as like, oh yeah, he's definitely gonna die right here and now. Those two injuries are definitely gonna do it. Also, I, I want something I wanna dissect here when um, Garp says justice will prevail. Alright, now, you could interpret that a bunch of different ways. You could say that Garp is coming to terms with his own mortality here. Garp realizes that he's gonna die here. But he's saying justice will prevail because ultimately speaking, Kobe will be a strong Marine and he will be the justice that prevails, right? Or just like in general, like, okay, even if I'm gone, I have faith that the Marines, that the good Marines, justice will prevail, all right? You could look at it kind of morbid like that, or you could interpret it as, don't worry, Kobe, justice will prevail, and my name's Justice. And then Garp just gets up, and he's like, takes off his shirt, and he's like, why are you taking off your shirt, Garp? It was holding me back, Kobe. Let's go. You know, okay, it could be that. It could straight up be that. Garp gets up, and he's, like, pissed now, all right? Another thing that he could mean when he says justice will prevail, and I want to throw this out here as, I don't know how many people are going to go with this, but I'll throw it out there as an idea, okay? Okay, I don't think Kuzan wants to murder Garp. Kuzan is working for Blackbeard right now because of the flashback. We saw how they all met and how... 
Blackbeard was kind of talking to Kuzan about, hey, like, hey, man, you got us all wrong, Kuzan. You know, we're not out there to, like, you know, kill people. Well, I mean, we are, but we're not out here to make people suffer. Well, okay, we are. But we're more about just our individual goals and ambitions and dreams, you know? Like, you were a member of the Marines for so long, you probably forgot what it was to actually have your own dreams and, and ambitions, you know what I mean? That's kind of where our motley crew, the Blackbeard Pirates, comes together and everything like that. You know, we all have our own goals. Katarina Davon over here wants to, like, murder a bunch of beautiful women. And uh, Vasco Shot wants to just get drunk. You know, we all have different ambitions. You know, I'm not sure what Lafitte's into. I never really asked. But, you know, here we are doing our own thing. We're doing our own thing, but as a cohesive unit together, okay? That's kind of where we're at right now, okay? And, and Kuzan kind of saw that as, like, you know what? I, I've been in the Marines for so long. You're, you're right. You know, I just want to live for myself. I want to be the kind of person I want to be. Now, that doesn't mean Kuzan's personality is like, he's evil Kuzan now. Kuzan still respects Garp uh, quite a bit, okay? They train together. Kuzan was the one that looked up to Garp and asked him to train him, okay? And I really don't see any particular reason why Kuzan's opinion of Garp would have changed now. Like, I thought wrong about you, Garp. I used to look up to you, but now look where you're at. Like, like Garp is pretty much the same dude from back in the day when he trained Kuzan to where Kuzan is now, you know what I mean? I don't think he wants to kill his former uh, mentor, you know what I mean? He's uh, there because he's like, hey, look, Blackbeard kind of helped me out. He offered me a role in his crew. I joined him. Um, he's not as bad as everyone else says he is. Uh, he'd be really pissed off if you just kidnapped everyone off the island, so I'm, I'm gonna have to stop you. But he doesn't wanna... If, if it came down to, like, dead to rights, where Kuzan had the opportunity to pull the trigger, or pull the ice gun, and, and ice Garp, as it were, like, this is it, Garp. You were my master, but now I gotta kill you because I'm a Blackbeard pirate now, you know? I don't think Kuzan would do it. I don't think Kuzan wants to kill Garp, okay? With that being said, maybe when um, Garp is like, don't worry, Kobe, justice will prevail, maybe it's a situation of like, I have faith in Kuzan. I think Kuzan's going to know what to do here, all right? And it might be because, and why would his opinion change just now? Well, because now they've actually exchanged blows. The first time, there really wasn't an interaction with Kuzan hitting Garp. It was just Garp manhandling Kuzan and blue-holing him into the ground, all right? That sounded dirty, but that's basically what it was. Like, blue hole! Okay, and now he's coming back up, and now it's like, all right, now it's like, let's actually have a, a bout of fisticuffs here, okay? And Garp knows his fisticuffs, all right? So Garp punches Kuzan, Kuzan punches Garp. Maybe Garp now lying on the ground, he's just like, ow, oh, that's smart. But I sensed a bit of hesitation in Kuzan's blow. I mean, that's that hurt. That hurt like hell. It split my skull. It gave me... It's ringing like a bell right now. But... I know when a man punches me. I can see into his heart. I can see into his soul when a man punches me in the face. Justice will prevail, Kobe. Do not, do not worry. You know, give me a donut, but also do not worry. <laughs> oh, that's his power-up. That's Garp's power-up. He's like, Kobe! Give me some powdered sugar donuts. All right, Garp! Um, oh, man, he just starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger! Which leads us to another possibility that, um, so I, I did a stream yesterday where a lot of these were, were thrown out. And, uh, so a lot of people are now throwing up, okay, what about the possibility of somebody else arriving? So we got a lot of options on the table for that, by the way. Uh, obviously most of the Marines are heading to Egghead for that big event. Um, maybe it's just a concert. Maybe all the Marines are going to get together, and maybe all the pacifistas are going to put on a laser show, and they're going to distract the Marines with a concert. There you go. Maybe that's what the big event is that's going to shake the world, okay? Maybe then Uta's going to be revealed to be canon. All right, whatever. Anyway, Eneru comes down and does a Frank Sinatra, you know, it's like, like, fly me to the moon. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just One Piece becomes a musical in the last half. That's in the last saga. Just One Piece was all about the music this whole time, guys. That was what it was all about. And Oda's like, we're just going to do musical number after musical number. All right, there it is. Okay, so, um... Wait, well, that was a tangent that got me off. To okay, no, 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 we got it. All right. People showing up to help out Garp. Okay. So, Moria and Perona are on the island, or at least they were, okay? That that thing's a little bit 
a little bit difficult to follow because Perona was there and she clearly had to take a boat to get to the island. Yeah, she can make herself incorporeal, but she still would have to get to the island somehow, okay? So she would have a boat, okay? Also, her whole deal was to try to rescue Moria. It would be kind of useless to rescue Moria if she didn't bring a ship, okay? So, you know, she has a ship somewhere, okay? So Perona asked Kobe to help her. You know, I'll, I'll free you from your cell if you help me find Moria. And then we just immediately cut to on the surface when Kobe's running around. So it's like, okay, did he already rescue Moria? Because Kobe is a genuine person. We saw that in the last chapter. He has very clear morals, and he's like, hey, look, there's a woman about to be attacked by pirates. He doesn't even consider the fact it could be a trap, which it was. So, you know, Kobe's like, all right, you want me to help save Moria? Ah, all right, he's a pirate, but I'll help him because you help me. Okay, fine, I'll do that. So I, I'm under the impression that Kobe already helped Perona find Moria, and they've already escaped the island, or in their process of escaping the island, okay? And uh, wouldn't it be great if they're about to sail away, and they see Avala Pizarro's hands begin to rise up, and they're like, oh no, that's not good, we've been hearing a lot of, like, attacking and, you know, like, cannon fire and everything, and now Avala Pizarro, and Perona's like, Moria, we have to go save him, you know, we have to go help him, he helped me help you, you ha we have to go save him, and maybe Perona's conscience just won't let her leave, and, you know, uh, she's very thankful for Kobe. And it's like, and also, Moria, he's got pink hair, and I've got pink hair. We have to, it's like this act of solidarity kind of thing, you know what I mean? Like, it's just how it goes. And so Moria's like, ah, kishi, she, fine, right? So a lot of people have thrown out the idea that what if Moria takes the shadows of a bunch of pirates on Hachinosu and throws their power into Garp, and then we get Nightmare Garp. All right, that's a very fan fiction-y kind of way of looking at it. But dude, I got to be honest with you, if we get Nightmare Blue Hulk Garp, like why what why wouldn't you want that? Why wouldn't that be amazing, right? Um, also, I would love the whole aspect of, like, the nightmare form to come back. You know, even, like, Luffy going back into that form at some point would be really beast mode. I except I really doubt that's ever going to happen, right? Now, Blackbeard also had Moria captive there, so the thing that could happen was maybe Moria's already dead, and they took the Kage Kage no Mi, and they gave it... Well, no, because all of the ten Titanic captains' abilities are now accounted for. Uh, I think they're all accounted for. Yeah, let's let's run through them really quick, okay? Burgess has the Riki Riki no Mi. Shiryu has the Clear Clear Fruit. Van Auger has the Warp Warp Fruit. Avaro Pizarro has the Island Fruit. Uh, Lafitte has, we don't know, but we, he already had a Devil Fruit prior to the time skip. He had some Pigeon Zone. Maybe he can turn into a bird. Maybe he has the Mythical Angel Zone. A lot of people threw out that, like he's the actual Seraphim. Who knows? But he does have a Devil Fruit. Um... Let's see, who's the sixth ship? I think that's Katarina Davon. She has the Kitsune. Uh, San Juan Wolf has the giant fruit. Vasco has the alcohol fruit. Doc Q has the sick fruit. And Kuzan has the Hia Hia Nomi. He has the chili chili fruit. So all of the all of the devil fruits of the straw of the um, I mean the Blackbeard uh, ten Titanic captains are accounted for. Um, there's other people. It's so weird about Blackbeard's crew. He's got, you know, himself and then the ten captains, but we don't know anybody else in the crew. Like if there's any other underling that's like kind of strong and their whole point is they're hunting very powerful devil fruit abilities so it's it's very likely that there could be other high-ranking members in the crew that we just don't know about they're not quite on the level of 10 titanic captains but they're up there maybe maybe all the 10 titanic captains have like an understudy have like a vice commander or something like that a lieutenant i don't know but anyway um, it's very possible they could have given the Kage Kage no Mi to somebody on their crew and then resurrected Moria and they just keep him down in the dungeon as a zombie just to f just just for the sake of it. Just like, ha ha ha, yes, Moria. You know, so we don't really know if Moria is even alive yet. Uh, Perona didn't indicate one way or the other. She was just like, I, I need to find Moria. He's somewhere in the deeper dungeon. Unless it was mentioned that Perona had a Vivra card. Did Perona have a Vivra card? I don't I don't know if she did of Moria. I don't think they knew about Vivra. I guess they might have known about them, but I don't know if she, if she had one of Moria, okay? So, interesting, put a pin on that. But the idea of, like, Nightmare Garp, like, Moria showing up and just ripping out a bunch of shadows and just throwing them into Garp, throwing them into Kobe or Prince Screws. Helmeppo! He takes a bunch of shadows, throws them into Helmeppo, and Helmeppo's just like, I don't know, guys, if we're gonna be able to do this. Let's do this, guys! I'm Chad Meppo! Let's go! You know, and as he fights, oh, dude, that would be great. That would be great. That would be actually a really cool way of, of, boosti of boosting their power. Um, we know Luffy could hold, like, a hundred 
100 shadows in him. So if Luffy could do it, you know his grandpa could also do the same thing. You know, Garp could hold at least 100 shadows. Helmeppo could maybe hold one or two. I think that was mentioned that like an average person, and, and, and Helmeppo is a little bit stronger than an average person. Give a little bit more credit for Helmeppo here. He's a lieutenant commander. Um, he's stronger than like Spondum. All right, give him like something for that. So Helmeppo could probably handle like one or two shadows. Kobe could probably handle like at least 10, maybe more. You know what I mean? Maybe 50 for Kobe because he is really strong. You know, he does have potential, something like that. Um, you know, Prince Groose, you know, he can handle a few. So, you know, if, if you're really going to go with that logic of just like, oh, fine, Kishi, she, she, take some shadows and just don't die. You know, that would be really neat. That would be really sweet, too. Um, also, by the way, doesn't Moria kind of have like a one hit kill ability? Because his whole thing is he rips out your shadows. So if, if, if it's in the middle of the daylight and Moria rips out your shadow, number one, you're immediately going to lose consciousness. That happened like across the board. Even like, like with Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, they all lost consciousness immediately. Now, normally you lose consciousness for like three days. Straw Hats are stronger, so they kind of came back like after a couple hours, but they still lost consciousness. But the thing is, though, if your body is in the sun when you don't have a shadow, you just disintegrate. Okay, now, if that happens, the shadow goes away too. But wouldn't that be like a one-hit kill sort of thing? Like, if Moria ripped out Avala Pizarro's shadow, then Avala Pizarro is this giant island in the sun. He'd be like, no! And he would just die. And then, yeah, you would lose Avala Pizarro's shadow, but he's dead either way. You've fucking, you've done it. You've one-shot Avala Pizarro. Moria is a lot more tough than you give him credit for. I just don't think he was using his fruit the right way, okay? I think, I think Moria is, you know, more deadly than you'd expect. Although, I think removing the shadow takes some time. No, because he did it with Robin in the final battle. It, it was, like, kind of, like, pretty quick that he did that. So, I don't know. Moria, I don't know. You, you could also throw out the whole thing with, like, hockey is able to, like, negate stuff, you know, but, like, with how much is that able to do it? Like, if you just exert enough hockey, would your shadow just come back to you? Like, I, I feel like, you know, you could still remove it. Like, that's the whole nature of the fruit. I don't know. I'm getting more on Moria, but that's one option, okay? Uh, people have also thrown out, hey, what about Sengoku and Osuru? So those are obviously Garp's friends. He literally, they, they go back further in the Marines than any other uh, soldier, okay? They literally join the Marines together, Sengoku, Suru, and Garp. We see them together in that shot from Film Z. And it's like, okay, Suru and, and Sengoku, I mean, they're really not doing much. I mean, they do have stuff to do, but Sengoku is, is the general inspector. He can kind of go wherever he wants. And Suru is a vice admiral, but she has like a really high rank because how long she's been, like her accolades and everything like that. You know, she is very well respected in the Marines, so it's like, okay, she can kind of go wherever she wants. So, you know, Suru and Sengoku could arrive at Hachinosu to help out Garp, and uh, some people have said, he's like, well, that's kind of far away from G1, how are they going to do it? I'm like, I don't know, you could... You could figure out something with that. Like, there's some kind of rocket ship that's like, you know, oh, Vegapunk invented this rocket boat that's like, you know, it's 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 in the planning stages. It's a prototype. It's just like, whatever. And then Suru's already, like, getting in, like, getting in the goggles. It's just like, get in, old man. Let's go. <laughs> just, like, fires off. Sengoku's in the back, like, ah. And Suru's, like, with the goggles, like, do 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 And <laughs> kind of like that, um... Kind of like the scene in Harry Potter, Prisoner of Azkaban, with uh, Ernie and the night bus. He's like, take it away, Ernie. And <laughs> just like, let's go. <laughs> Except it's Suru. <laughs> there you go. That works. That works. That works. All right, all right, all right. Let's, let's rock with that. Let's rock with that. It doesn't matter how they get there. Oda could come up with some reason how they get there, and I'd be fine with it, okay? It's just like, okay, so they get there. Sengoku and Osuru, if they arrive, Garp is fine, okay? But just... Also, taking it away from all those different perspectives, okay, of, like, Moria helping Garp, or Kuzan coming over to the, the side, or at least deciding not to, like, fight anymore. Beyond all that, I just think, thematically, I mean, maybe you disagree, I know a lot of people do, actually, that, like, no, thematically, Garp should die right here. It's like, I disagree with that. I vehemently disagree with that. I think there's so much more Garp could do here. I feel like... You know, you could do a thing where he could get, I mean, not captured in the way of, like, actually getting captured, because he's not going to do that. But he could turn himself in for that perspective. He's like, okay, Kobe, you know what? Grabs Kobe, grabs Helmeppo, grabs Prince Cruz, chucks him onto the ship. He punches out of Ala Pizarro's arm so it doesn't get, you know, it doesn't crush the ship. They get away, and then Garp's just there, and he kind of does something similar to what Roger did, where Roger just, I guess, just walked into a Marine base one day and was just like, all right 
right, guess you caught me, mateys. Oh, no, I still love that. I love thinking about how Roger turned himself into the Marines. Like, he just, he's like, all right, time to turn myself in. He just wanders into a random Marine base somewhere in the South Blue or whatever. He's like, oh, matey, I thought this was a hot dog stand. Oh, darn, it's a Marine base. Well, I guess you, you got me, matey, you know? And then meanwhile, it's the same thing kind of parallel with Garp, where Garp kind of hands himself over to the, uh, well, I guess the Cross Guild eventually. It'd be Blackbeard's crew. So, if he were to do that, if Garp were to like, all right, Kobe, Helmepo, Prince Cruz, you get away. I'm going to stop the attack. All right. And now he's just on an island by himself, surrounded by pirates, just on all sides. Okay. Garp might just be like, all right, you know what? And also, but by the way, once again, Kuz does not want to kill him. Okay, so Kuzan, he might be the newest member of the Titanic captains, but he might actually use his abilities and his sway. Like, obviously, Vasco Shot and Shiryu and Avala Pizarro are going to want Garp dead. They're going to want him dead and, like, stake his body outside the island as, like, hey, hey, teach, check it out what we did, you know what I mean? Kuzan might be able to, like, no, we're not killing him. All right, we're not killing him. I'll, 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 I'll freeze you. So, like, it could be a thing where Shiryu gets up Shiryu gets up with his sword, and he's like, all right, it's over, Iron Garp. I'm going to skew you right through that. You know, and then that's, that's you know, Aokiji freezes him. He's like, all right, everybody just shut up, all right? We're turning you over to the cross skilled. We need money, all right? You just, you leveled all of our town. We need money, all right? So tell you what, we're going to turn you over to the cross skilled. We're going to get the money. And then we're not going to talk about this anymore, all right? And and Garp might go along with it because Garp has a plan. He's like, justice will prevail. It's just like, all right. And it, it's similar to what Roger did. So it's like there's the parallels there, okay? Roger turned himself into Marines. Garp turns himself over to the Cross Guild, okay? And so then you get Garp at the Cross Guild and you get all these hijinks with Buggy and Mihawk and Crocodile. Ah, uh, right? Okay, sure. Like, there's other ways to do it. Or you could just do a thing where Garp does escape. He just straight up gets up, punches out of all of Pizarro's arm, and they all make it back to the ship, and they sail away. And you might be thinking, like, well, what would be the point of that? It's like, well, the point is they rescued Kobe. The point was not to level the island. The point was to get Kobe back and the prisoners, and they did that. Second thing, it showcased Garp's level of strength that we as the fans have never really seen on that level. And third of all, Garp himself realizes... <sighs> I'm getting old, you know, I'm getting up in years, you know what I mean? Like, back in my heyday, oh, that, a, a sword wound in the gut, man, that wouldn't even have winded me. I would have still fought like normal with the sword sticking out of me. I fought with, with 17 swords sticking out of my body at one time. They called me Porcupine Garp in that battle, you know? Um, but now it's like, oh man, I take one sword wound and I'm like this winded? Oh man, a couple of galaxy impacts, they're not as strong as they used to be, ah. So it might be a thing where Garp begins to realize, like, ugh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm past my prime. I'm past my heyday here. I almost died to just a couple hundred pirates, you know? A couple thousand pirates, and I'm down, all right? So maybe that gives us an idea of, like, okay, Garp realizes his mortality here. And then, later on in the story, Garp has another serious battle, except it's, it's against, like, Blackbeard this time. It's like Blackbeard's heard what he did to his men, and he's like, ah, but Garp, I can't let you leave alive now after what you did to me, crew. And, you know, and Garp is like, I'm aware. And then, so then you have Garp versus Blackbeard, who is, like, the inherited will of Roxty Zebek, who is, like, Garp's, like, enemy. So you could have a battle between Garp and Blackbeard, and we can learn about, like, hey, yeah, I got Zebek's diary or something that I read, or, or Zebek was my father, you know, and you killed him or something, right? It, it could be something like that, and we can learn about the relationship between Rox and Garp through Blackbeard and his fight. If, if Garp's gonna die... I want Blackbeard to do it. I want, like, rocks to come back from the dead or, or someone significant or, like, Eam or Agorose or somebody, like, of a higher tier to take him down. I don't want, like, all right, he gets stabbed by Shiryu and punched by Kuzan and Avalo Pizarro crushes him. That's how Garp goes out. You know, I'm all, I'm all right even with Kuzan fighting him to the death, but I just don't think Kuzan's going to do that. I don't think Kuzan wants to fight Garp to the death, okay? For a moral reason of, like, I don't want to hurt, I don't want to kill my mentor. That's kind of messed up. And also from a physical reason of, like, I physically don't want to fight Garp to the death. Who would, you know? Um, but, yeah, that's the way I feel about this. I think Garp will survive. 
for now. Uh, later on in the story, he may very well die, and I'm preparing for that. But, like, right here, right now, I just don't think it makes sense. I think we can do a lot more with Garp first uh, without just having him die right here in this battle, all right? So uh, that's my take on it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now let's move on to some whale facts. Whale facts! Alright, so I think most of you probably know at this point that whales are mammals. That's one of those animal facts that you learn when you're like a little kid. Like, did you know whales are mammals? What? Yeah, there you go. So, you know, they are warm-blooded, they nurse their young, you know, the milk and everything like that. They, they have to breathe air, you know, they have a blowhole, that's what that's for, okay? Now, where did they, like, evolve from? You know, like, when did they evolve from whatever, okay? Like, what are they most related to if they are mammals? Okay, well... They are most related to the even-toed uh, ungulates. Ungulates? Undulates? Undulates, yes, the even-toed undulates. Um, this includes uh, giraffes, uh, buffalo, uh, you know, camels, you know, those kind of mammals is, is what they're mostly related to. Uh, around 49-ish million years ago, um, this thing existed. It was like a small deer-like mammal. Uh, and that, and that, you know, was the origin point for, like, camels, buffalo, and whales. So, this is where whales came from. Pretty cool, right? So, yeah, around 48, 49 million years ago, they split off and, uh, began to live an aquatic life. Now, it, it took about another 5, 10 million years after that for them to become fully aquatic. But they eventually got there. And along with that, uh, as, as the years and the epochs go by, as evolution continues, um, even though they are still mammals, more and more of their bodies was, of course, modified to be under the ocean and in the water, okay? So, uh, first of all, their hearing has been modified now, where the hearing with a whale kind of works through their jaw. So it's really cool. Well, they'll send out, like, an echolocation kind of single, like, Whoo! and then it bounces back and then it hits them in the jaw and kind of goes back up to their ears or their drums and so that's kind of how they hear in the ocean um, so it's kind of like a form of like sonar in a way it's kind of really neat uh, their bodies of course become more streamlined uh, their hind limbs slowly began to disappear as flippers uh, began to take hold there although they do not have gills because they have to breathe air which is what the uh, blowhole comes in handy for the blowhole is actually a modified nostril so the nostril has modified to the back of their, you know, up here in their neck area, back of their, you know, I guess the back of the whale. And then they can surface and then breathe and then expel water. And then there you go. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, some of the differences that happened with whales, you know. So they have like a sonar, streamlined bodies and uh, hind limbs disappeared and they had flippers. They have flippers. Flippers are handy to swim with. Okay. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's your whale fact for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Teching, signing out. Later, everybody.